just to poke the hornet's nest comically. I'm just sitting here thinking how, at the end of the day, Powell and the Fed didn't cr cause COVID. Um, and the really low interest rates that we got to, yeah, like, yeah, sure, it's under their watch, but they didn't control it. They didn't start any of that. I don't know how you can, like, for an economy to work ordinarily in the sense that, like, for most people who use it, like, not the people worried about the money, um, it's really, like, 5%. That's a totally reasonable rate to pay on debt frankly, a little higher. And so Paul's actually, <clears throat> he's kind of landing the ship perfectly from that point of view. So certainly could have been done sort of more perfectly, but I don't know. I think just given what happened, he's not wrong to want the stable cost of debt in the U.S. to be above 5%. I think a quarter quarter percent raise on the rates is entirely appropriate. And then big picture, you just you want inflation to be lower um, than the yield on debt. And it's kind of baked into that. It's like a natural equilibrium. That's the reason it could be healthy um, for that long decade beforehand, largely because some people got hurt worse, many people benefited more, but big picture it all like swelled the same if, if debt and your cost going up are, as long as you're treading water, like that's sort of what it's supposed to do. You're just treading water and other than that, it's what you create. So anyway, big picture, even if I disagree with the path and if he had known the future, he would have done it differently. A Fed chair that gets us back to, you know, hat size interest rates, which are healthy within three years-ish of COVID and I don't know, maybe within 16, 18 months of like COVID monetary and fiscal stimulus madness. It's actually done a really good job. So this is scary to look at because of the steepness of the curve going way back. Uh, these are the Fed rates since 2007. And notice he's got us back at a responsible percentage of debt of like 5%. So in an odd way, this could be a brilliant maneuver that's larger because he's not only fixed COVID, he's fixed lots of the excesses going back to 2007. I think if you zoom out, if we can live in a world where the cost of money does actually mean something, um, it's probably pretty healthy. Even I hadn't really, you know, I knew it was higher versus, you know, steepness and recent memory, but on an absolute level, it hasn't been this high since, since before the financial crisis. So, he may big picture bring us back to some sense of normalcy once this other stuff gets rinsed out of the system. Believe it or not, I agree. I actually think the Fed has been remarkably good about raising interest rates when in the past, all previous Feds, except Volcker's going back to the late 70s and early 80s, would have responded by just lowering interest rates or keeping interest rates too low. If anything, they're still a little bit too low, but I'm impressed at how Powell and crew are continuing to raise them even when all the politicians want them to be lowered. And all the crypto bros, you know, no offense, have an incentive in seeing the rates go lower because they want to see Bitcoin and crypto pump again. So I don't take their incentive seriously here. Um, they want to see printing, but the reality is Powell's not printing. He's closing off the spigots and there will be damage. There will be unemployment. There will be recessions. There will be bank failures. That's just the price we're going to pay for having overreacted on the response to COVID. And yes, I think we overreacted with the lockdowns, not with the health measures. Um, and uh, for having basically having the money printer open for so long. So I do think Powell is doing the right thing in the right way. And I am surprised and impressed. Regarding the claim that the Federal Reserve increases the stability of the economy and decreases the risk, uh, according to Ben Bernanke in a speech he gave on Milton Friedman's birthday, um, he says that the Federal Reserve was responsible for the Great Depression. So I'm sure there's uh, counter evidence, on maybe some instances, some statistics that show that the Federal Reserve improved uh, the economy in some way, but I haven't seen them. So maybe you could um, enlighten me. I think you guys should fork this and create a room where you can discuss the pros and cons of the Fed. I want to keep this room focused on what's happening in the market right now. I agree with Naval that we leave the, leave the dead buried as far as the Fed discussion. Uh, I posted this earlier because it's interesting here because there's parts of Sachs that definitely understands the economy and what's going on, but then he, become, he comes dangerously close to 
a planned economy. Like, oh, well, they did this, and that's dangerous, but they should do all these other things. And he's right that the Fed's failed before, especially in the 70s. And actually, Chris is right that the Fed probably had a lot to, or interest rates had a lot to do with the Great Depression. But part of the modern Fed kind of accommodates that. So, but again, I'm more talking about here how it's interesting how Sachs, and he very well may be right, but as he's criticizing Powell, he very much brings his own politics and his own opinion. He's like, oh, well, don't this whole do whole, this whole thing that lays over the whole economy. Go in here and do that. Fix the price of oil in here and like just let people build shit as much as they can. And it's interesting because in one place he's talking about like a growth economy, like let the, and to do that, at least commercially bank create, created money supply would have to go up lending, right? You need money to grow with. Um, but then in other places, like, but it's about fiscal austerity here. So in a very clever way, um, he's making about just his own differing opinion, which is different than Powell's. And I could be wrong. The funny thing is. No, I think you're completely wrong on that. Sachs is 100% correct. And he's not talking about a planned economy. He's talking about exactly the opposite. He is saying, stop spending so much money, government, because you're crowding out the private sector and you're creating more demands for goods and services that are in scarce supply. So that is less planned of an economy, less government intervention. And he's saying, stop uh, getting in the way of oil drilling, uh, threatening to do windfall profits taxes, uh, not handing out licenses, shutting down pipelines and so on. That's driving up the cost of energy, which is a key input to the economy. So he's basically arguing for less government interference, which would actually increase the supply side, lower demand on the government side and bring inflation down without killing the private sector. So I think you misinterpreted him here. Um, uh, perhaps, but remember, like, sort of what's the difference? Opening up the fossil fuels debate while you try and fix the problems with the economy, quote unquote, and interest rates, that's going to be an entirely separate battle. And we have this whole data path that has to do with Fed's raising rates. I don't understand why it shouldn't be, oh, he should stop raising or cut and he should do these other policy choices, both because the policy choices are difficult to get done, but that's absolutely a political divide. This isn't about responsible government. That becomes about fossil fuel and climate change. And that happens to be his politics. And an equally informed David Sachs that happened to have had different parents and a different life experience might be, you know, generally speaking, in favor of being careful with global warming. So I do think it's inserting policy. And you're right, it's an underlying input to the economy. But for that reason, it's such a big part of what everything happens. The interest rates really touches, touches it anyway. So why not just ease off what you've been doing that is roughly working instead of introducing these other things? So I get that they sound rational and I happen to think they're rational, like I think we should. But that's a separate issue of whether you let oil producers um, you know, have different costs and be allowed to drill in different places or not. But basically here... You know, if he thinks this is the bluntest possible tool, which again, or not bluntest, he doesn't even say that. It's like he describes it like a machete when in fact it's really kind of across the board and it's well understood what happens with interest rates. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess we do somewhat disagree in the sense that it sounds rational enough, but he's absolutely putting on policy choices that align with his politics and common sense that someone else would just disagree with and also could be reasonable. So, I don't know. Why, why start doing stuff like that? But totally could be wrong. And last but not least, he includes all this stuff in some diatribe against Powell, right? What does Powell have to do with oil subsidies or regulation or the EPA? Like nothing. All Powell can do is what he's doing. So to include that in some positioning about what's best, that's why it becomes economic planning and not just what Jerome Powell should do. Because those other things we talked to that he brought up, they're not the Fed. They're just not the Fed. It's not reasonable to bring that into a conversation about what Jerome Powell said. Like, sure. Let's have another conversation about how we should plan the economy better and what we should do. And maybe we should do that, but it is inserting policy and including that criticism against uh, um, the, the, the head of the Fed. It's totally unreasonable. It's nothing to do with Jerome Powell. All he can do is what he's doing. The reason to start doing stuff like that is to point out that um, inflation here is not just a monetary decision, it's also a fiscal decision. And this administration has put certain policies in place and made certain decisions by executive action, which are having consequences that ripple through in inflation. So they can't just throw up their hands and say, oh, it's not my fault. They could bring down energy prices tomorrow. And if they did that, that would lower the cost of that would lower inflation. They wouldn't have to go begging to Saudi Arabia. They could just open the spigots here. 
what it has to do with Powell is he said Powell's not bringing it up in his testimony. But I agree with you there that if Powell did bring it up in his testimony, then Powell would just get fired or replaced because he serves at the pleasure of the administration. And Chris, um, out loud, I was thinking a lot today about how it's just that now's not the time to maybe fix all this stuff, but I hope we don't forget it. So I don't want to change how we're trying to address these major problems, but it feels like we're at least at the tail end of like escaping the stupidity with somewhat, somewhat reasonable um, damage done, right? However, on the other side of this, it is musical chairs. We do have to change how we do things. I don't think it's a baby with the bathwater thing, but whatever we're going to do, I hope we do it on um, the other side of this and not just wait for the same one because the same thing, because it will be the same thing again. I mean, we're seeing this now. It turns out that um, monitored and monetary theory just like it can't solve everything.